Good evening, everyone. Here we are with the year-end 2023 Necromaniacs podcast extravaganza. You got all three of us on the line today. Myself, of course, Mike Scandato and Jeff Kashid. All together for our top 666 horror movies of 2023. How's it going, gentlemen? It's going good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I, I'm going to say something. Uh I'm going to walk back some of my my 2023 bashing comments because ultimately when, when you put them on paper, while, okay, not as great or plentiful with the bangers as 2022, still pretty good. So I've spent literally almost the whole almost the whole year or three three quarters of the year bashing the year. But ultimately, yeah, there was a it, it took a little bit of finessing to put it to, to six. So, yeah. I, I got to be honest, like, uh, so I, I agree with you. Uh, 2023 was not as stellar as 2022. However, there's some real, really excellent films on my list, especially, uh, I would say the first, the top, the top tier of my six, the top half are movies that regardless of what year they came out would probably end up on this list. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with you guys. Um 2023 kind of started off as a rough year for horror. And then one of the best horror movies ever made came out this year. Uh, I think we'll all be talking about it very shortly. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, let's first uh, let's get through our, um, you know, our basics here. Uh, we're going to shout out the other horsemen. Uh, starting the week off on Mondays, we have Brandon Legion, who brings us Horror Wolf 666. And right now, though, there is a huge opening on Tuesdays in a normal year. Normal normal month of the year, we would get on Tuesday, we get Jackie Smith's into the necrosphere, but he's uh he's on holiday, as they say over there. On holiday, <laughs> yes. That's how they would say it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Wednesday, of course, uh, I bring you everything went black, which is a um, you know, sort of variety of different topics. And of course, Thursdays is Necro Thursday, which is today, and uh Necromaniacs comes at you with uh some combination of the three of us delivering uh, our opinions and reflections on old and new horror movies. So that brings us to the end of the week, Mike. So who do we got? We got Spitball Media with uh, my very own flesh and blood, John Draper, uh, where they also discuss film, but they discuss television, pop culture, things of that nature. Uh, they have a best of you know year in review episode coming down to pike two which i think is next week so unless it's already out so check that out as well spitball media every friday saturday's a day off um go out enjoy yourself you know do some last minute christmas shopping because when this episode drops we only have like a few days before christmas hits you know if you're if you're into that um sunday of course Carl Hikawa brings you Soul Knox, which is um, a show dedicated to darkness, the esoteric, anything in that of that nature. And uh, Carl and I are doing a collaborative uh, podcast called Darkness Weaves, where we trade off every month and we talk about the work of Carl Edward Wagner, a uh, author who just really more people should read. And a lot of his uh, work is out of print right now, except for Kindle with the exception of in a, in a lonely place, which uh, the fine people at Valancourt books have uh, published, republished that. So that's available in, um, you know, in paperback and hardcover. And uh, we have uh, our newest member, Cheyenne out there with it running on his own schedule. And he brings us Iblis manifestations. So that's it, man. In a war against mediocrity, we are, uh, we're up in the ante, as they say. Exactly. Absolutely. Uh, Check check out our, our brothers in arms uh, and hit those subscribe buttons. And uh, we thank them for their support of us. And we thank you for our support of us as well, of course, listeners. Now, uh, before we get into the episode, is there anything notable that you guys have checked out recently that may or may not have made it on your list? Uh, no. <laughs> well, actually, actually, yes, but I'm going to save it for for the honorable mention, you know, um, cause I have my six and I, and I have an honorable mention or two for sure. Yeah. But, uh, I've, I've done just a bunch of catch up, you know, 
Uh, yeah. For 2023 horror, really. That's kind of what I've been doing. And uh, it, it's been fun doing that, actually. I have. I, um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, no. I was, I was just going to say, I don't have anything horror related. I've, uh, uh, if anyone follows me on Instagram, there's been a, a few tragedies in my life. And uh, I've been trying to. No, I haven't really been in the mood for horror the last couple of weeks. So I've been trying to sort of just watch something, I guess, a little more lighthearted. And it's worth noting that I checked out the new Indiana Jones movie. Did you guys see this? Oh, no. I'd like no, to. I haven't seen it. Well, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so don't bother. Jeff, aside, the tragedies aside, it has not dampened your, your spirit, as they say. So no, it hasn't. No. No, you know, hey, I wanted to like it. Indiana Jones, uh, is, you know, guys our age, we grew up with that character. We grew up with those movies. Sure. Uh, I had read some not so kind things about it, but you know, I thought I'd give it a shot. You know, just something lighthearted. And man, like thirty minutes in, I wanted to fucking blow my brains out. <laughs> it's just wow. bored out of my mind. Hated it. What a disappointing way to end uh, an iconic character. Mm. That's that's really sad, man. It, it's yeah. funny. I I watch uh, Bill Maher on on HBO every week, right? And he had comedian Ray Romano on. Wow. And Bill gave him props for doing something that a lot of people are not doing, which is leaving your legacy alone. Mm. Because uh, every, everybody, everybody Loves Raymond was one of the biggest TV shows of the last 20, 25 years. Mm -hmm. and the network has begged, pleaded, you name it, for that guy to come back and, and redo it and relaunch it and blah, blah, blah. And he has steadfastly said, no, it's never happening. I want to leave that show alone. That show is very special. And there's something to be said for leaving shit alone, guys. Would you agree? A hundred and ten percent. And, you know, Bill Maher has a podcast. Hmm. I, I, I would uh, I would like to uh, invite him to join the uh, Horseman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. It, it's a great podcast. I mean, I you know, I, I've been a fan for a while, but. That was such a great takeaway. I was like, you know what? So many people are just not doing that. And they're, they're you know what I'm saying? And it's like, to see someone say no is just refreshing. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. Bill Maher occasionally makes some good points. I used to be a big fan as well. He's lost me a little bit uh, lately, but uh, you know, I still tune in. Yeah. So you're saying his podcast is good? Yes. Uh, Mike is saying that, I'm not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, the thing is this, it's it's very guest driven. He has some interesting guests on it, you know, actors, comedians, like he had Kenny G on. Like he'll have like just this kind of weird mix of guests on, which make it interesting. So yeah, the podcast is definitely uh a little different animal from the TV show. So yeah. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with people got to leave their legacy alone, and that that extends out to the discussion we had last week about bands re reunite, mm. dragging their name through the mud and embarrassing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys talking about anyone specific, or? Yeah, we 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 list, we talked. I talked a bit about the side by side show and how ultimately it was good, but I was underwhelmed, and I was like, you know what? If they don't play again, it's fine. But if they play again, I don't have an interest in going to see it. Like, I just feel like, um, I don't know. Again, reunions are fine. Let people have fun. Let younger people who miss things see things. But for me personally, I, I think if I've seen it once and it didn't knock my socks off, I am good for the rest of my life because I remember it when it did knock my socks off, Jeff, you know? Sure. Uh, um, being in a band that gets asked to reunite, I mean, I get like uh, a message on a monthly, some used to be weekly basis. Is ISIS ever going to get back together? Yeah. And the answer is always no. Mm, interesting. Uh, so I kind of I agree with your point, although I, I've seen some really good reunions this year alone. I saw Botch and uh, I love them back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even now that they're all pushing 50, they still put on a great show and sounded better than they've ever sounded. But I have seen some reunions that have just been sad and have gone on way too long. Like, remember when the Pixies got back together and then five years later, the Pixies are still, like, not putting out a new record, but still touring, playing the same set? Yeah, I don't want to well, see that. I, that's how I feel, too, man. I mean, I, I didn't name any names last week. There was a specific band that I loved in the 90s that, like, it just 
they're just doing really, really just pushing it too hard, man, too far. It's been years. It's like, all right, guys, you guys weren't doing anything for like 20 years. And now suddenly you're out there playing shows regularly with the same set over and over and over again. And it's like, I, know, I had enough. You got to be stopped. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, yeah you, I think you, I do too. You got to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Cut it out. Yeah. Put it out now, you know? Right. And yeah. of course, you guys, uh, you know, our metal fan listeners, I'm sure you've heard and you two have heard that um, Dylan Escape Plan is back with, uh, you know, original singer uh, Dimitri. And again, I think that's a case of, okay, they broke up in 2017, made a big deal out of it. They were at the height of their fame. I mean, they were like on fire back then. But then now they're coming back with the singer who probably a lot of fans never even got to see ever, actually. So that's kind of cool. What do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, D- Dimitri was a friend of mine. We uh, ISIS toured with Dillinger back when Dimitri was was in the band. I love yeah. that guy. Hmm. Props to him. I honestly thought Dillinger, that breakup was three years ago. I, I didn't realize it's been that long. Yeah. Uh, hey man, if there's interest, good, good for them. Good for them. Yeah. You know, fuck it. Right. Yeah. I mean, there obviously is an interest. <laughs> Three shows. Yeah. The, the shows have sold out and it's, you know, um, that will be a tour. I guarantee it. Mm, not a one. Yeah. No. no, no, absolutely not. Oh, oh! You want to hear what I have to say about it? <laughs> yeah, like a little bit, little bit, just a um, tiny bit, tiny bit. I think it's just part of a business plan that was put together when, when they broke up. Honestly, hmm, interesting. Hmm. You know what? That that's not really too. I'm not saying them specifically, but I remember doing interviews when ISIS broke up, and we still had a whole tour left to do. And the interviewers were like, "So, what do you, you know, like reunion?" You know, you think you guys will get back together? I'm like, we haven't even really broken up yet. Like, still got some shows to play. Um, but yeah, reunions, you know, it's not a guaranteed thing, you know? Like, sometimes you don't get to see the band you loved as a kid, you know? And I just think people won't accept that now because everyone has gotten back together. Yeah, my speculation on that is that it was all part of a plan, even this reunion, honestly. And even how Dimitri come back into the band, you know? That's my cynical, my cynical opinion about it. Just having spent a little bit of time around some of those dudes. Mm, yeah, uh, not, not as much as you, Jeff. But I mean, you know, there's my 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 reflection on it. I got you, man. Hey, man. Um, I thought Dimitri did do the last couple shows with them. Like, didn't he get on stage and play with them? I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I never, I never used to go see those guys play, so I don't know. Mm. <laughs> well, uh, you know, listeners, this is what happens when you have three musicians doing a horror podcast. You get a musical interlude that I hope uh, you all enjoyed. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Any records you guys want to talk about before we get into to, to movies? I want to talk about, actually, that I saw that is like, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that I've never seen this movie. And it came out in 1995. Mm. It's not a horror film. In a, in a sense, it is a horror film, but not a part of the horror genre and uh it's a film that paul paul verhoven directed okay mm-hmm. about 1985 and it's the a, a study in just like sublime cringiness and this is of course the movie i'm talking about is showgirls oh wow you never saw it before no sir never not until friday night of this week did I wow. see it? It's it's pretty great. I've always liked it, and I've always got shit for liking it. But now it's cooler, to, a little cooler now to like it. Definitely, I loved it. I think yeah, it's a lot, the king of trash cinema. It never even I never even thought about watching that movie honestly. And then like in the Friday afternoon, Tina, my girlfriend, texted me, and she's like, "Have you ever seen Showgirls?" And I'm like, uh, "Negative on that." Um, so she's never seen it either. She's like, "I started watching it, but you have to watch it with me tonight." So I'm going to start it over again when you come home. So I'm like, okay. So we watched it Friday night and I was like, like blown away by um, a couple things, just like how bad of a film it was like on the surface. Right. You know, but I know Paul Verhoeven is like big on um, social commentary and sort of, um, you know, the irony, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, it was like some of the most like uncomfortable 
cringy dialogue that almost doesn't even work. Uh, scenes like sexual scenes, extreme nudity, NC seventeen yeah. style nudity. Yeah. Yes. Right. But not sexy at all. You know what I'm trying to say? Like awkward, yep. and weird, and just like, you know, tons of naked women. You know, no, no dick though. Honestly, just just naked women. No, no peen. Right. Right? Um, <laughs> yeah, the nineties. You know, no one wanted to see dicks back then. I guess. Uh, yeah. So, so all all naked women, no peen, and uh, and just really not sexy sex scenes. And I have to think that there's some kind of a statement being made by Paul Verhoeven, and of uh, maybe with um, you know, money and the United States and sex and the detachment of like feeling and stuff like that. I don't know. Like, I think that the movie's trashy, but deeper, there's like some underlying subtext going on with that movie. That's my opinion. I think you're probably right. Paul Verhoeven's stuff signed into everything from, you know, RoboCop to uh, Starship Troopers, you know, like uh, a movie that's smarter than people give it credit for. Yeah, I haven't absolutely. seen Showgirls in a long, long time, so I can't really say for sure. But I remember thinking it was pretty fucking bad. Honestly, and uh, for me, it's it's it just it's a, a very, very hot Elizabeth Berkeley and a very hot Gina Goshen, and mm. it's it's wild. It's ri like ridiculous, um, trashy, and f it's just fun for me. I don't know. I just think it's a fun movie and a wild movie and irreverent and. I don't focus on the acting. I don't focus on the message, although there's probably definitely a message somewhere. Um, it's just like a wild mid nineties ride at this point that uh, again, it's, it is a bit of love or hate movie, a bit, you know, of a love hate kind of thing, but I I've always dug it. I saw it in the theater actually on a date. So there you go. Hey, it's better than hollow man too. Another Paul Verhoeven movie from the nineties. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm intrigued. I might watch it again. And I, I, I think I'm going to do like a, a Everything Went Black episode on the film. Maybe just on, maybe even, I mean, I know no one, probably most people don't want to hear it. So I might, I might just do it on, our, on the Patreon channel and um, talk about it, you know, and give my reflections on it after watching it again. Because I, I'm intrigued by it, especially knowing that Paul Verhoeven, you know, being a fan of his other material and knowing that, you know, especially Starship Troopers, which is like a film mm. that a lot of people just watched. And enjoyed that on the surface, you know, because it is an entertaining film, but mm -hmm. there's a, a heavy message in there about like, you know, fascism and like right wing ideologies and things like that. And I'm just interested to see what what, uh, you know, what I take away from it, the second viewing. Um, I have to say the sickest character in, in Showgirls is that Andrew Carver guy, the, the, mm -hmm. the singer. Do you remember him? Yes. I, I don't. All right, now let me ask you a question. I think I, I don't know if I'm right about this. Is it Andrew? Who was the 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 racist guy on Howard Stern that what he would have every now and then that was like, wake oh, up, quiet people. Carver, uh, not Andrew Carver. Um, it's not Andrew Carver, but, right? It's a different name. Uh, oh, Carver. I can't think of his first name. <laughs> that would be great if it was the same name. <laughs> oh my god, I don't. No, it's not Andrew. Definitely not Andrew. You know what I'm talking about, though, right? The guy I was like, exactly what talking about. KKK black guy. people. Yeah, KKK guy. I just yeah. can't think of his first. I can't think of his first name. I'd have to look it up. Like, I literally. Right. Anyway, that that's my my latest uh, watch. Nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> Nice holiday film. It's nice. Yeah, nice holiday film. You know, yeah. I'm um, writing this down to rewatch that now. <laughs> yeah, thanks, no, Mike. Well, yeah, see, definitely check it out. I'm so now, of course, we have uh, we got the necrophone, and we got a one caller this week. If you want to call us and wish us, uh, you know, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or Happy New Years, hit us up at 908-913-0782. 908-913-0782. And this week, we got one caller. Um, we got Dave over at Razor Reader Metal, who I follow on Instagram, so give him a follow. Yes, and um, definitely a friend of the show. Uh, a friend of the Horseman, and uh, this is Dave. Hey, what's up, Necromaniacs? It's uh, your buddy Dave over at Razor Eater Metal on Instagram. Just wanted to check in because I haven't called in in a little bit. Um, finally got around to watching some newer stuff. Uh, the other night, checked out the 2022 film called Sizu, 
S-I-S-U, I believe I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, but maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that one's horror adjacent. Um, it runs like kind of inglorious bastards. Basically, this dude um, strikes some gold, and uh, he takes a journey as uh, the war is going on and uh, runs into some Nazis along the way. And uh, basically, our main guy is uh, killing Nazis. So, I mean, you know, what better thing than that uh, for, uh, for a great uh, watching experience, you know. Um, really good effects, good storyline. I enjoyed that. Um, last night, ended up checking out two films in a row. Uh, finally got around to watching When Evil Lurks. Finally, a good movie this year where I'm not going, yeah, it was okay or anything like that. Like, that one was awesome. And uh, that made me go back and listen to the full episode that you guys did on that film because uh, I skipped it, um, most of it, because I didn't want any spoilers. And I'm glad I did because some of those shots in that movie caught me by uh, by surprise and genuinely terrified me, i got to say. But excellent film. And uh, also watched the movie Malum, M-A-L-U-M. Uh, it's a police, uh, supernatural, cult-involved um, horror, gore, splatterfest. Uh, but it, I thought it was really well done. I really enjoyed the visuals and the makeup. Um, not sure if you guys have checked that out yet, but it might be something you can squeeze in before the end of the year comes up. But, uh, yeah, guys. Just wanted you uh, check in. If I don't call back again, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. All the best. Keep doing what you're doing. Cheers. Bye. Thank you very much for the call, Dave. Really appreciate it. Um, are you guys familiar with that Sif Sif you, uh, not, uh, you know, film at Sisu. all? Uh, Sisu. I'm very familiar with it. It's it's a movie I wanted to squeeze in for this uh, year end, but I did not. Uh, John uh, Draper loved it. And a couple of friends of mine loved it. So I want to see it. Yeah. 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 Same. Everyone I talked to loved it. And I just, it just, I uh, just missed it. I remember we saw the trailer when uh, I forget what we went to see in the theater, but we saw the trailer. My girlfriend said, I would definitely want to see that. And then just watching YouTube the other day, a trailer came out. I'm like, oh, yeah, we got to see that. And we never did. Uh, I don't know why. And um, of course, uh, you know, evil, when evil lurks is, uh, you know, that's something that's probably going to come up later in this episode. And we've seen mm -hmm. that. Um, now, ha what about Malum? I've seen that film, actually. Have any of you guys seen that? No. I want to see it because I'm very, like, I mean, I saw the original film, um, Last Shift. And yeah. the director remade his own film. And Last Shift is a streaming era horror movie, which I'm like, we are now in the era of str stream, like remakes of something that was streaming, like, like so it's literally 10 years old uh i didn't see it yet but i i just found the whole idea interesting because uh i've liked last shift quite a bit although i thought it fell apart a little bit uh, like you know uh the third act and uh, i'm curious as if they fixed any of the problems but uh i mean it's not a movie i was dying you know like i hope they remake this uh strange just very strange you said you saw it yeah, yeah, I did. I, I, I actually wouldn't would like to maybe cover this at some point because um okay, it's it'd be interesting to discuss this because I I also saw the last shift when I think it was on like Netflix or something like that. Like, yeah, I, it was Netflix. Yeah, yeah, like years like maybe ten years ago I saw it yeah. and uh, really enjoyed. Like similar to you, the third the third act I thought was like not as strong as the first two. And uh, mm -hmm. the first two really created an atmosphere of like just like paranoia and boredom and creepiness, yeah. all this, you know, yeah. great things. Um, the story is interesting. The story is very intriguing, very good, uh, well written, I think. Um, that's why I'm like, why mess around with that? Because really, the original, I thought, pretty much did the whole thing perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. Malum, right away, I like was like, I have to see this because I enjoyed the original so much. I got to yeah. say, I didn't enjoy Malum as much. And if I had maybe just seen Malum on its own without watching the first version of it, the first original of it, I probably would have liked it better because, you know, it's a little bit more money, bigger budget. There was like better gore effects, things like that. But 
I prefer the last shift over Mal. Mm. Mm, right on. I'm definitely going to check that out. Yeah, we should definitely talk about it. Uh, Mike Scandato, thoughts? Uh, have not seen either film, but they're kind of on like a mental short list for me. Um, but uh, they sound cool as hell. Yeah, no, I definitely watch both of them for sure. I mean, I'm not saying Malin was bad, just that I prefer these. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> all right, so this brings us to what we're all here for today is yeah. our top 666 horror films of 2023. Not a, not a, not a landmark year for horror films, but there was still some good stuff that came out. Absolutely. 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, how do we want to run this? Who wants to start off all that kind of um, stuff? I will kick it off with my number <laughs> six, which may be a bit of a surprise. Uh, listeners, full disclosure, uh, we are unaware of each other's lists, correct, guys? That's right. Correct. We haven't checked any of this. Which is our, our usual, uh, you know, that's how we usually like to do it. Makes it a little more interesting that way. So, yeah, my number six is the American French horror thriller. Directed by Frank Calhoun, Night of the Hunted. Guys, uh, I really like this movie. It is currently streaming on Shudder. Um, perfect? No. But I enjoyed the 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 very kind of like open-ended ending of this film and all the tension and all of the intensity and, you know, some, some claustrophobia there. I, I think I, I I like a good sniper movie, guys. Is what it is, and, and oh, this a sniper movie here, and uh, I this was like I was glued to this movie. I enjoyed the shit out of it. I haven't seen it actually. I know that you were keen to to talk about this on the show, but we never got around to it. So I, I would be interested in checking it out and hit, maybe hitting it next year. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think I would say definitely some of our listeners might have peeped this by now. Um, not a huge, huge buzz, but I know everyone who, who did see it, like I would, you know, look on like, you know, Facebook and Instagram, really enjoyed it. Um, Alexandra Aja is a producer and it, it's mm. got his little bit of his stamp on it there, I would say for sure. Uh, it, it's like a French American. Uh, you know, man. Yeah. Dude, I had no idea he did that. So that's, I would, oh man, I would have uh, put that higher on my uh, to watch list if I know Aja did it. Yeah. So it dropped uh, October 5th, 2023 on Shutter, 94 minutes long. Uh highly recommended kids. It is my it is my number 6 of 2023. Uh, isn't this the guy like I know Aja produced. Is this the guy that directed the Maniac remake? Yes. Bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maniac remake was awesome, I thought. I really it's, enjoyed it. It was that. fantastic. I loved it. Yeah, it's it's got that that vibe, you know. Um he also has a hand in uh, P2, which was the Aja, again, like that that American, you know, parking lot kind of flick that I feel like I saw, but I don't remember any of it. So I'd like to kind of see it again. Uh, and he did a movie called Oxygen in 2021 as well. But yeah, that P2 movie is from 2007, which is like the, you know, right around the the, the, the French explosion there here in America. Mm. But um, yeah, guys, check it. Check it out. Awesome. All right, I guess Mike I'll Hill? go next. All right. Yeah. My my number six movie was Thanksgiving by Eli Roth. How do you like that? Yes, yes. <laughs> I am not a big fan of most of his films. I think Eli Roth, the man, is fucking cool as hell. I like watching him on documentaries and hearing interviews with him. And I've I've had some inside knowledge about him, not my personal personally, but people who've interacted with him in a uh, in a press way uh, say that he's a really cool guy and, you know, just like a good dude in general. But mm. I just don't like most of his material. But Thanksgiving. I love it. I thought it was a great film. Yeah, Fun. Yeah. It's it also in, introducing us to um, a possible new slasher icon. You know, John Carver. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, who was a real guy. And you know, I think we talked about that on the episode. And uh, yeah, really looking. And, and I just saw, I mean, I know when our episode came out, we were speculating that there would be remakes. And then I think, I think the day before that episode went up, he was on Instagram talking about how they, he just got funded for the, for a second uh, Thanksgiving yeah. film. Yes. Yeah. Definitely coming 2025. 
Um, and I bet there'll be a little bit of a bigger budget because the movie made a lot of money. And so, yeah, looking forward to uh, Thanksgiving too, man. All right. Oh, yeah. yeah, I've been listening to Eli Roth on the podcast circuit and uh, it seems like a very, I mean, the guy is an encyclopedia of uh, knowledge uh, of film. He's very, very, uh, has a huge film IQ, as they say. Uh, he totally nailed it with this movie. He, like, I was listening to him explain it. He's like, this is sort of like, I'm picturing it as a remake to the an 80s movie that never came out. You know, like the trailer is is yeah. for a movie that never came out. And this is the reboot. And uh, he totally nailed it, man. I I loved this movie too. Uh, and I don't really like Eli Roth's other films. I think uh, the last one he made that really worked for me was uh, his first one. Um, Cabin Fever? Cabin Fever, yeah. Knock Knock was, half of it was good. Uh, the other half, not so much. But uh, this was a big surprise. I'm a huge Tim Dillon fan, so it was really good to yeah, see oh, him. Oh, man, that Tim Dillon cameo was, was golden. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, if you spend any time in Massachusetts, uh, I, I love the way everyone nails the accent. There just Some people go a little comical with it, but, man, it's it's so spot on. I, I liked it a lot, man. Good pick. Yeah. What about you, Jeff? Oh, What's your number I guess six? it's my turn. Okay, this is something I just watched the other day. You know, for the longest time, I had a TV show in my top six, and I didn't feel good about it. Hmm. So I was like, I got to catch some more stuff. Like I said, um, I haven't really been in a horror mood the last two weeks. Uh, and this movie particularly really disturbed me. It's uh, Birth Rebirth. Uh, yep. Yes. By, uh, I'm sorry, I scribbled the name so I didn't get it down. Uh, it looked Lauren Mass directed yeah. uh anyone familiar with their other work or is this a first time film oh it's her first movie actually it's her debut and it's it's a banger yeah my god i found this movie to be uh very upsetting and disturbing mm. and it really really got under my skin it's like Cronenbergian reanimator uh you know a bit of frankenstein there's just, there's a lot going on and yeah it feels totally believable too yes it, it definitely had yeah i see what you're saying there um for the listeners uh, you could also argue it's it's uh, it's a modernish take on frankenstein as well um yeah it's got the cronenberg thing but it's also got the, the frankenstein tale so to speak uh you've got a uh a hospital nurse and then like a hospital uh what would you call the uh the the doctor who's not a doctor she's like a more technician you could say yeah um and uh, two f fantastic actresses, uh, Matt mm. Flint and Judy Reyes, who really like, like I'm trying to put put into proper words. It's believable. Yes, that's probably the best the best word to use. It's like a very believable movie almost, although it's very fantastical as well. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, I loved it. You're gonna you're gonna see this uh, mentioned again. I had a feeling. Uh, also wanted to give a shout out to the movie Proxy, which it kind of reminded me of. Mike uh, Hill and I covered Proxy uh, back when I was new to the podcast. Uh, Mike Hill, you weren't as hot on it as I was. But it kind of gave me like those vibes, just very unsettling, creepy, like, you know, uh, it, it. they did it in a way where it felt like, it, like I said, believable. Like, this could really happen. <laughs> Obviously, it can't. But uh and, you know, I saw it at a time in my life when, uh, I don't know, man, like, like if something's disturbing you in your real life and you watch a movie that disturbs you, it, it, it it's different. And this this really got to me. I liked it a lot. I can't wait to see what else uh, this director does. Really yeah, I really funny. enjoyed this I, one, I, too. I, oh, sorry, Mike. Sorry, yeah, Mike. this, this uh, I think our, our quality control manager, Rennie, uh, recommended this one to everyone, or, to, or at least to me he did. So, you know, I usually put his recommendations at the top. And yeah, I love this film. I thought it was great. Um, really looking for it. And and it's it's that thing that I dig where it's like really based on acting and atmosphere <laughs> and like yeah. two people just to get it's like a small cast and like mostly dialogue, you know, just very, very cool. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I also watched that on the recommendation. Um I think he mentioned it on our Instagram page. And I was like, oh, you know what? I do need to watch that. So thank you for that. What's what's funny is that, okay, the movie takes place in the Bronx. And I was dead convinced that 
None of this was shot in the Bronx, but I'm completely wrong. It was shot in Co-op City area of the Bronx oh. and in New Jersey. Yes. So how about that? I thought it was oh. Canada. <laughs> my, uh, my, aunt, my aunt used to live. My aunt used to live in Co-op City. So I'm, I'm familiar. Oh, right with on. That. Very cool. Story. All right. Uh, I guess that brings it to my number five, which is lo and behold, kids, it is Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, a lot of fun at the movie theater with this one. Um, I am probably the biggest fan of Eli Roth of the three of us, which is no secret. Uh, it goes back to a story I told when I met him at a chiller 20 years ago, and he was just a guy who put out his first movie walking around, just talking to random horror fans and giving out signed posters, which I still have mine. Um, you know, yeah, I, I think it was kind of just what horror needed, I think, at, towards the end of the year, when I think the better stuff was happening. Um, and, you know, it, it brought some some butts to the seats and it, you know, made all of its money back very fast. And I am, you know, excited to see what he does with part two. That's my number five, Thanksgiving. All right. All right. So my number five is also birth rebirth. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So we, you know, we covered that. We talked about it once again. It's like exactly the type of film I like, um, which this is like a kind of like a mainstay with shutter where they're, they're smaller films. Um, almost feels like it could take place like for real, like in the actual world, mm -hmm. it has a certain greedy grittiness to it. And it relies mostly on acting and dialogue. Which is like I love movies like that, you know. And there's some definitely some special effects. I just thought it was an excellent all around movie. So no surprise there. My number five is Birth Rebirth. Cool. All right. That that brings us to my number five. And guys, I had a feeling this was going to happen. We're going to be end up talking about the same films. My number five is Thanksgiving. All right. <laughs> uh, and I I loved it. Uh, are people pointing out how funny that the, the, this movie is really funny too? Yeah, and I I love the opening shot of this movie how it just plays uh, pays homage to Halloween. Yeah, uh, right off the, the bat. It started, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I loved it from that moment on. I was hooked. I mean, you've seen so many like scream whodunit kind of movies, but th this one did it right. It understood what it was. It's very funny. It's, it's self referential and. Uh, but man, it, it was it was the horror movie I needed to watch at the right time. Uh, loved it. And finally, really uh, happy to have an Eli Roth film that I love. I actually saw this on Thanksgiving. The movie. Theater. Yes. Oh, <laughs> nice. All righty. Uh, moving right along. My number four is the first of two January 2023 films. And this one is Brandon Cronenberg's Infinity Pool, which, man, am I glad I got to see this movie uh, within the last couple of weeks. Um, I love Possessor, but I think I like this movie even more. Oh. Um, really, like, disturbing and, and interesting and had something to say. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I Mia Goth is, I'm kind of, you know, Crushing, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. If it wasn't crushing already, this movie pushed the crush over the edge. Um, <laughs> she is a she's a tour de force, to use uh, an antiquated term. But um, yeah, man, this this is a good movie. Uh, the the Cronenberg stamp is there. The the family wackiness is there. Let's just say, mm -hmm. to, put it, to put it mildly, uh, Alexander Skarsgård, probably one of my favorite modern actors like if he's in something it's it, chances are i'll watch it honestly um and uh cleopatra coleman I, i've never heard of her before but she's another drop dead gorgeous stunning actress um yeah man uh very creepy interesting movie a uh, bit of a take on marriage take on class of course and a take on violence so yeah loved infinity pool guys yeah, I love that the movie involves cloning and you didn't even mention that when talking about the movie. Like, that's how fascinating this movie is. Like, the cloning is like, oh, yeah, like, that. that's in there, too. You're right. Um, yes, I did not mention cloning. Isn't that hilarious? Hmm. Yeah. And so I remember texting with a friend. like, do you think he was a clone at the end? And I texted back. I was like, I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't think that yeah. the movie really cared about that at all. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a movie that like you you kind of won't ever forget, you know. Which again, that a lot of the Cronenberg movies, father and son, have that quality. They they kind of they kind of just gonna stay with you forever, probably. Absolutely. So, yeah, man, love this one. So you know, this, this is bound to happen. Uh, <laughs> my number four is also Infinity Pool by Brandon Cronenberg, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I, I don't know, I I I have very 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 specific clear memories of watching this movie because it was like i remember being cold out and it's going through some hard times in my life at the time i saw this movie going through some very uh very intense emotional things and i remember watching this on one of my friday night uh menlo park amc excursions late at night and uh by myself basically in this movie theater there was like maybe two people there and uh, just really sinking into this whole film, just like all the all the emotional stuff that was going on in the film and the craziness and the chaos. And oh, yeah, the cloning. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> very, very great movie. Uh, Cronen Brandon Cronenberg just seems to be getting better and better with each film that he does more and more into moving into his own style and his own sort of uh you know philosophy and and similar to his father, you know, they're very distinct different but very much unique filmmakers absolutely my number four is also infinity pool guys <laughs> Stop. Stop it. i'm dead That's serious awesome. man uh love it although i will say i didn't love it as much as possessor but that's not a knock against uh, the director i mean possessor was i mean we're talking like top 15 of all time for that movie it's just amazing and this is great. And I do like, I, I, you guys mentioned, like he's moving in a little bit away from that sort of homage to his father that, that gets thrown around a lot when he talk about his films. <laughs> I think it's always going to be there, obviously. But this felt a little less uh, less so. Like it, it felt more assured, more of his own voice. And um, love this movie. Uh, funny enough, uh, talking to people uh, about it, a lot of people really hated this movie mm. uh which you know hey I, I, oh okay <laughs> I, I i i obviously feel different uh but it is sort of somewhat of a divisive movie uh, I'm, I'm reading out there and just from people i talked to i remember my friend saw in the theater and she said it's the worst fucking thing i've ever seen in my life that's, that's a an little, exact quote I, yeah that's a little hyperbolic if you ask me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess, you yeah, know, maybe she hasn't seen much. I don't know. But, uh, you know, this is not uh, like a popcorn movie to uh, just casually watch. If you're just sort of a no. casual horror fan or whatever, you put this on, you're going to be upset. I get, I get that. True, true. And it, going back to that ending, spoiler alert, um, part of me thinks, yes, he, it might have been the clone. But if the clones are the same thing, thoughts and the same feelings and the same everything mm. kind of didn't matter but at least it showed that the clone had remorse and empathy and like what the fuck did i just do this so right yeah interesting i i really need to watch it again it's uh, i haven't watched it since we covered it way back when well not way back when like eight months ago or something mm. Uh, yeah, very interesting movie. Funny we all had it at the same number, too. Yeah, yes. no, that's interesting, man. Yeah, very interesting. Does it bring it to my number three? Number three. My number three, shocking surprise, is Birth Rebirth. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I almost had a bit of a flip-flop with Infinity Pool and Birth Rebirth, but ultimately Birth Rebirth landed at three. Um, disturbing, uh, exciting, interesting movie. Um, although it's got the Frankenstein nod and a little bit of like a reanimatory kind of nod, I think it's like a, an original voice at the same time too. And it's a first fucking film. I mean, you can't find a better first horror film here, in my opinion. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's very impressive. And uh, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what happens next from uh, what do you call it, director Laura Moss for sure. Uh, Absolutely, huge recommend for Birth Rebirth, folks, from all of us. All three, that's great. Yeah. So my number three, 
is this is where I think we're the top these we might depart a little bit on these top last few, but um mm, interesting. My, my number my number three is any Ennis Maine by uh Ooh. Mark Jane. Yeah. Mm. Which um I saw this in the movie theater on uh on Easter Sunday, uh in the morning. And right. um incredible. It was just like this immersive experience. And I've since purchased the Blu-ray. I still have no idea what the movie's about. Um <laughs> but I keep watching it over and over and over again. And it's one of these things where you just pick up different aspects to it. And um, it's like a David Lynch film, exponentially more abstract with almost no dialogue and just images. Mm -hmm. Now, a, lis a, a listener mentioned this to us, didn't they? Uh, uh, someone, someone mentioned this and, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally, man. We're going to, I'm going to talk about, about it a little bit. I'd love to talk about it as a proper episode too. And sure. I believe Rennie, Rennie, it's a, a quality control uh, manager. Rennie also mentioned it. That's how I think I first heard that name. And I think I watched the trailer. It's a movie I really wanted to squeeze in that I didn't yeah. squeeze in. Same. Um, you know, and I'm going to fix that over the holiday break. I have like about 11 days off coming up. To nice. Google. And um, now it's folk horror, quote unquote, but meaning what exactly real brief Mike. you know it it's it's a reach to call it that really i mean it's like oh. a word you know it's like a name that people like to throw around like you know like people say like post hardcore and bullshit like that yeah and it means it's, it's like full no. car has become like the post hardcore moniker for horror films agree so agree. yeah so it's like there isn't i wouldn't say i would not say it's a full car film i would just say it's a i would say it's a weird tale i would mm. say it's a a, a we, more of a weird tale with almost like a Lovecraftian sort of vibe to it. Um, it takes place in some remote Cornish island, you know? Okay, okay. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. You know, there's like oh. maybe two two characters in it. It's wow. very, very long, very slow, you know, real, real, um, you know, kind of atmospheric. It's all atmosphere, really. Mm. But yeah, watch it. It's shot really well. Um, I heard about this on the, the Evolution of Horror podcast. They had the film um. guest. And, um, you know, they're all Brits over there. So, um, you know, it probably made a little bit more of a splash in the UK than it did in the States when it came out. But, um, but yeah, I dug it. question on that. Is it scary? I would not say it's scary, but there's a, 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 a sense of dread throughout the whole thing. And that's why I classify it more as a weird tale than as a folk horror. Awesome. Hmm. All right. I guess that's my number three and now we are sort of departing here a bit um my number three came out earlier in the year it is Bo is afraid by ari aster ah. did either of you guys check this out no no nope mm. very divisive movie um i mean it's my least favorite of his three films so far but i obviously still really liked it quite a bit Bit of a departure for him. This is not exactly a straightforward, straightforward horror movie. It's sort of more of a very, very dark comedy. It's a bit of an odyssey, a journey, a road movie. It is three hours long. It is very weird. Um, I'm really glad that someone was willing to uh, put up the money for Ari Aster to make this. Uh, and I have to say, most people really seem to hate this film. And it does fly off the rails and go into a lot of different directions. But man, was it, I was just fascinated with it the entire time. Three hours long. I was never bored. Um, Joaquin Phoenix, I will watch him, you know, drink coffee. He's, he's that interesting of a, of an actor and him with Ari Aster's sensibilities was, was just such a great combination. Um, man, I, I liked this movie a lot. Yeah, I uh, I haven't seen it. I know you and I were were discussing possibly doing an episode on this, which you know yeah. I, I'm down for that. I think it's streaming now somewhere, right? I, I would imagine so. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 another one that didn't make the cut, along with Ein's Main, um, Innis Main, a, a movie I'll be mispronouncing for the rest of my life. Um, I love the two prior Ari Aster films, uh, obviously, but I know this one is is quite a departure, and that most people did not like it. But mm. I still really want to see it. Yeah, there is a penis monster in the movie too. So <laughs> excellent. Yeah, very. That nice. should sell you. 
Yeah. Like, you know, it's nice to have a good penis monster in a movie, definitely. Yeah. Don't see that a lot. Going back to Mike's uh, comment about the lack of penis in Showgirls. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, there you go. This makes up for it. Ex excellent. See, we're progressing as a society, indeed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks, getting down to the nitty gritty, the top two. And I'll be damned if, if, uh, if those, uh, you know, if the listeners haven't figured out what these are going to be yet. Um, yeah. My number two is When Evil Lurks. Oh, okay. Yeah. Number two. Okay. Yeah, that's my number two. Um, yeah, unforgettable film. Uh, my, my, you know, the first thing I've seen from director Damien uh, Rugna, uh, a name that I think we're going to hear a lot about. Uh, and I, I hope that really is the case. You know, like back in the day when they said that about Clive Barker, when Stephen King unleashed that quote, that was kind of the best, worst thing ever for him because he never really lived up to that quote. But I do think Damien Rugner is going to live up to these quotes about uh, him and this wonderful film. Uh, the movie has been covered right here on Necromaniacs. Of course, we sang its praises. I have not seen a single negative comment about this movie on Instagram, Facebook, pretty much anywhere. Pretty much everyone who has seen it has been really into it, if that means anything, uh, which I think it does mean something. When no one has a bad thing to say about a movie, uh, it is creepy, it is scary, it is thought-provoking, and uh, yeah, wonderful film, When Evil Lurks. Amazing. Could not agree more. Mm. I have a I'm feeling it's going to come up again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to refrain from my 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 little plug, my, my spiel about it, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's your, 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 your goes to Mike Hill, I guess? To, yeah. To. All right. Now, most people are going to call bullshit on this, but fuck you. I don't care. This is my, this is my, this is our show. So, like, this is my opinion. Uh, you know, hit, I, I'm a hipster, I guess. Uh, Skinnamarink is my number two. Mm, excellent. There you go. The, the die is cast. Um, Kyle Edward Ball, you know, he's a guy that comes out of that whole analog horror thing, which I'm also a big fan of, that whole um, subgenre of YouTube, uh, you know, show, movies or series, if you will. You know, some of the stuff that's, I would say, check out in that genre is uh, Mandela Catalog and uh, Gemini Home Entertainment. These are very creepy, atmospheric, not sure what's going on type of films, you know, and that's... Skinnamarink, though, I, 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 I've I watched it a bunch of times over the, since I saw it in the theater. And I think that I saw it in that immersive experience in the theater. And once again, it was during the the Menlo Park AMC days, a chapter of my life, which I'm glad is over with at this point. And I've yeah. moved past the lurking loneliness of that period. And um, But yeah, I, I watched it by myself in an empty theater with like one other person who was passed out. And uh, it really... <laughs> really really sunk its teeth into me to the point where i was i had like oh i didn't have nightmares but i felt like i was in a nightmare world just because of it the, going from that theater walking across an empty parking lot in an empty shopping mall to my car wow. driving home and just sitting in darkness afterwards it just i couldn't get it out of my head yeah mike you and i uh well, all three of us discussed this, but I remember having a text exchange with you. Both of us, like after seeing it, I was like, I don't know what I thought about it. Like it took a long time to sink in. I'll just go ahead and say this is my number two as well. Mm. Okay? And it was my number one for most of the year. Uh, just reiterate everything Mike Hill just said, man. It like it's an immersive experience. You have to give yourself over to it to really have an effect on you. I made this comparison a lot. It's like Earth 2, the album Earth 2 from the band Earth, or like seeing Sun Live. You know, it's it's all about tone. That's what this movie really is about. If you're looking for jump scares, any sort of like cohesive plot, you know, uh, this isn't the movie for you. And another movie that's uh, extremely divisive, I think most people, I, outside of you guys, everyone else I recommended it to fucking absolutely hated it. Oh, yeah. Um, which brings it to my number one movie of 2023, folks. <laughs> my number one horror film of 2023 is Kyle Edward Ball's Skinner. Oh, go, man. man. That's, That's my number one movie. 
for Dude. several reasons. Um, okay. I haven't been able to shake it. You know, it, it's a movie that has pretty much stayed with me from the one time I watched it. One time. Um, are they in an alternate universe? Are they trapped in hell? Is it about child abuse? Is it about child abandonment? Is it about horrible parents? Is it about mental illness? According to the director, it's about whatever you want it to be about. And I think that's fucking great. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people have made up their own narratives about this movie. They have made up, they've made up their own minds about what they think it's about and things like that. Um, again, great concepts, great uh, idea for a fucking horror movie. Um, all that aside, visually, it is it is a hellish movie. It is a dark movie. Uh, if you have a terrible attention span, this movie is not for you. And mm -hmm. I think I don't think this movie is for stupid people. I might get some hell for that. Um, <laughs> I think I I just don't. I I, I think it's for people who want an experience and are able to just concentrate and able to turn off the lights, put their phone away and just kind of get literally, I think, trapped in hell for a little while. Um, and if it's not really hell, it is in trapped in, in your fears, in your childhood fears uh, and things like that. Look, not mm -hmm. a lot of people want to be in hell. Not a lot of people want to be trapped in their childhood fears. But nope. that's what good horror can do. Um, good horror is supposed to scare you. Also, this movie is scary. If uh, if you're not at least scared by some of it, I mean, I don't know, I don't know. But um, then Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight is for you, I guess. <laughs> but I just again, it's a movie that I think will stand the test of time, and I do think years from now will be appreciated a lot more and hated less. We all love to hear. We are in the minority, apparently. And that's we fine. are. That's fine. But it is the best horror film of 2023. And believe it or not, a, a, you know, a website and magazine that doesn't hold much credence with me anymore, Rolling Stone magazine listed it as their number one of 2023. So, oh, interesting. They got something right for a change. Yes. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. So um, that's my skin of a rink spiel. <laughs> amazing yeah i mean 20 years from now this is going to be like a, a, like remember back in the day movie theaters would show midnight movies and it would always be like pink floyd the wall hmm. a rocky horror picture show i can see this kind of becoming something like that like yeah. like just a big big cult following and yeah it's a great movie it was my number two obviously i'm sorry mike hill i cut you off the movie scared me it was real like in, in in not even like a cool way you know what i mean like like it scared me in like this traumatic um borderline abusive way because it was mm -hmm. touching on all of this like emotional traumatic things that have happened over the course of my life where it's like it just touched on all those things and excited those horrible moments and coalescing them into this one experience and it was really just like a trip watching that movie absolutely oh, yeah. yeah so that brings mike hill your number one i already know what it is but yeah my number one is uh when evil lurks man it's um yeah. it's a great film a powerful movie uh once again damian rugna is like the next guy the next it director in horror i think i think that you know he has an incredible future i love terrified this movie created a it seems to me like the beginning of a whole new universe, really. I mean, there's these rules, you know, that, that he puts down on the table. The ending is sort of an open ending. Um, maybe this connects to Terrified somehow, you know. Um, mm. You know, it's a weird tale. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a cosmic horror film in some ways. It's, um, it addresses uh, like the whole possession thing and like this very pragmatic uh, nuts and bolts like almost like a uh like a public health issue you know kind of thing yeah and it's uh very anti-christian man it has like this whole like the church doesn't matter it's over our belief in the church is finished organized religion's over with and it's interesting man very very interesting and also i know that damian rugna is a black metal guy like he loves like satanic like metal so that's cool 
Really? Awesome. I did not know. I did not oh, yeah. know he was a metalhead. Interesting. Yeah, he was a metalhead. He's a metalhead for sure. Wow. Well, that makes me like him even more. When Evil Lurks is my number one, too. Um, yeah. it, for the longest time, it was Skin Marink. Uh, and then I saw this. And man, I mean, you know what I really like is the whole, like, they p- treat the whole possession thing as it's just a part of life. It's just there. There's no explanation for it. Really, like, oh, yeah, one of these things. Like, a very interesting pre- like the first 15 minutes i felt like i was a little thrown off like i'm like did i miss something like it, it it just presents itself in such a unique way and the terror just builds and builds and builds and by the time that movie was over man i just i felt exhausted it, it was like i just watched um uncut gems uh, like that that feeling you get when you watch that movie of just dread and anxiety and uh you know, we talked a lot of shit about 2023 being a bad year, and then they drop When Evil Lurks, which I really believe this to be top 10 of all time, maybe five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Definitely. For sure. For it's, sure. Yeah. And it's incredible. I feel like that's almost like, um, like that technique of just dropping you in the middle of the story is almost like this, like, I know, I know, like, almost like a European thing, you know, like in films, mm. like, um, you know, in the states here, you, you know, domestic films they they over explain a lot of things, like even in horror films. But like, I think it's like an international thing where you're just kind of in the in the middle of it, you know? Because I feel like Terrified was similar to that too. Like even with um, like his other film, and uh, oh. and also the the bleakness of this whole thing too. Because like apparently all the possessions like broke out in the urban areas, and you're oh we're gonna go out to the country where we're safe, and then this wave of just darkness is like enveloping the entire planet and you can't escape it. And that's like this very paranoid bleak vibe in the whole film. But this movie isn't without elements of, of dark humor either. There's some very oh, humorous yeah. scenes in there too. Very yeah. funny as well. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right, man. I think like if this is an American film, there'd be like a title card like that comes up before the movie explaining everything like, and this, you know, like, uh, and this doesn't do that. Like you eventually find that your footing watching it, but it, it does throw you off balance a little bit. And I think that really added to my enjoyment of the movie. Yeah. There's a lot of unexplained stuff too. Like with that mechanism that they used, which never mm. even got you deployed properly, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it's so right. cool. That's the best thing. The movie, like there's all this like questions without answers too, you know? And mm-hmm. I don't know. I just, I want more. I want more of this world. Me too. I one of my yeah. biggest intrigues is the what the what that world was before this what this kind of new dark world. Like you know what I'm saying? Like what ha- like what exactly happened to to make it the, this godless world? You know? Yeah. Was it always mm. this weird place or whatever? But we'll see. Um, I have a uh, I have an honorable mention. Uh, okay. Um, and then one great non-horror, which may or may not be a surprise, probably not a surprise, but my, my honorable mention is a, a good Halloween horror movie that I missed at Halloween time called Cobweb. Did you guys see uh, Cobweb? I did yet. see it. You did? What did you think yes. of Cobweb, Jeff? Well, it is in my column of movies I didn't like. Uh, <laughs> it came out this year. <laughs> I Okay. I really enjoyed it till the very end. The very end was a bit of a hot mess, but I mm. liked the vibe. It, it was Stephen Kingish vibes for me. For you know? sure. Um, a, a cool ha- Halloween time horror watch for the most part. Um, not a home run, but definitely pretty cool. First time director Samuel Bowden uh, follows a young boy raised by these weirdo parents who hears noises coming from behind the wall in his room, and thus the fun ensues. Sure enough, Cleopatra Coleman from Infinity Pool is in this. Thought she looked a little familiar. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, she's the yeah she's the teacher. Uh, so ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, she's kind of hard to miss. Um, now, I liked it. I, I it was a movie that I was like, oh, I, I wish I wish I caught this around Halloween. It might have had a better vibe than at Christmas time. But yeah, sure. the end gets a bit wonky. But a movie that I think some listeners would enjoy. Uh, and then, of course, a probably potentially favorite non-horror movie of the year is The Killer, actually. Uh, I really yes. enjoyed The Killer. 
Um, I wish I'd gotten around to seeing Killers of the Flower Moon and Ferrari and Napoleon, but I have not seen any of those three movies. But I will hopefully remedy that and see a few of them uh, before the year is out. The Killer is fantastic. And if it was more horror, it would probably be in my top three of the year. But man, yeah, I loved that movie. I didn't think Cobweb was terrible, just didn't totally work for me. I think I gave it like, you know, a C or C plus or something, mm. you know, like not not a stinker. It's not um, Exorcist Believer, which is also yeah. on the list of movies I did not like. Um, yes. mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got a couple um, honorable mentions. Wanted to give a shout out to Fall. Of the house of the house of usher the tv show yes. which i yeah. really 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 loved i know it's not a film but mm -hmm. uh mike flanagan is someone everyone loves and have always felt a little mixed about and i haven't really liked his last or any of his netflix shows but i really liked this one a lot i really had a great time watching it uh another thing i have here uh influencer really big surprise that came out this year Hmm. that I expected nothing from and uh, thoroughly enjoyed. Uh, I think it's very much worth a watch. And I watched, I fudged a title, Where the Devil Roams as well, which I think is worth of a, worthy of a shout out. Oh, no, Mike Hill, no. I know you saw that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, uh, I, mean, I have a couple of mentions too. If um, I don't know if you're done with your mentions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Where the Devil Roams is definitely almost made it on this list. It's um, my 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 buddies over at the uh, the Adams family. It's their new film that came out later the early like in the later part of this year, yeah. and uh, with each film, I feel like these guys are going from strength to strength once again. You know this this um, I mean I like all their movies. Um, you know uh, the deep the deeper you dig is still probably my favorite of theirs. Um, mm -hmm. but. This one is more of um them coming into their own style and they've tried they've expanded and moved forward in their craft in making this film. And yeah, right from the beginning, the opening of this film, I was like, wow, this is like some new shit. You know, this is like and, and also I gotta be honest, I don't think anyone makes films like them either. They have their own unique no. voice. Yeah. Um absolutely. Definitely, it's a it's a, I, this would be if we were doing a top ten, this would probably be in my top ten. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great sure. film. They keep moving forward. It has its own sort of brooding like vibe to it, which I really appreciated. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's that's definitely something I can't wait for their next movie. And I'm sure they're working on something again because they are constantly working right now. Very cool dynamic. I enjoyed your interview with them just the, earlier yeah. this year. Uh, I enjoy any interview with them. It makes me want to like their movies when, when I hear them talk about their craft. Uh, and uh, I like, yeah, it almost made my top six as well, but um, just not quite. This would be basically num my number seven. I have another, um, Andy Land, which is a movie that's oh, under, yeah. under everyone's radar, man. And it, I thought it was pretty pretty sick, like, movie. Hmm. Uh, that might have made it in the top ten, actually. And um, it's... Uh, not a lot of people saw it you know no one really it came and went it was on i think it was maybe streaming only um you can rent it i think it's playing somewhere maybe on tubi possibly but it's um takes place in like a rest area and like it looks like utah or something like that and it's about like basically lot lizards and uh mm -hmm. <laughs> you know a term i'm going to put this in the 90s because it's like that's that just that culture doesn't exist anymore out on the road um and uh and also the um it's a slasher film it has to do with uh like religious extremism um there's a lot of nudity in it too which you know mm. yes yeah, that. There was. Um, oh i gotta yeah. see this movie i just read about it yeah yeah <laughs> no, it's good it's definitely something to check out i i uh put it on one of my runners one of sort of top mentions here mm. okay I actually have one more honorable mention uh vhs 85 uh, i like it oh uh, uh, yeah top tenor definitely top tenor mm. i liked it too of the uh, of the recent crop of vhs movies i like that one the best for sure um is there anything that came out that you guys were hoping you'd like but didn't or 
you know, anything like that? Anything like, uh, well, I, mean, I think we all felt the same way about Talk To Me. Yes, I was just going to say, I feel like we might be the only podcast that seems that way. I don't yeah. literally the only one that is not head over heels with Talk To Me. Hmm. Don't get it, man. I don't get it at all. But I went into it wanting to love it and I didn't. And it, not a terrible movie. We discussed this a lot uh, on our podcast about it, but yeah, yeah, just nothing. The only couple things that really stand out is like I didn't like to the point of anger was uh, Evil Dead Rise and Exorcist Believer. <laughs> yeah, Exorcist more than Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise is for sure more, more fun uh, than Exorcist Believer. Um, but yeah, two ultimately letdowns that were supposed yeah. to be not letdowns uh exorcist is woo, bonkers bad not bonkers yeah bad. it's currently my worst movie of the year <laughs> nice <laughs> evil dead rise evil dead rise was like the worst man in my opinion because yeah. it's it's easier it's it's hard to make another exorcist expansion film i think that's a sure. more of a daunting task than making an evil dead film mm -hmm. evil dead how can you fuck it up? It's like all the elements of a great movie are there for you, and you just got to stitch them together and do something cool with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yet yeah, they can, it just is like a try hard film. It's like someone who doesn't like horror felt like it made that movie. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. No, I got you. LA setting. Nah. That is the, that is the most un LA setting in the history of film. Some big, <laughs> tremendous building where it's like rain it just it just seemed like it was like chicago or yeah i was gonna say more city. like chicago it's like gotham yeah. city like that was not yeah. it was very like i never i did not understand the setting of that yeah place. very weird to set that in la i'd forgotten about that too you just mentioned it like i was like oh yeah that was supposed to be la and you know i lived there for <laughs> i don't know 15 years and never saw anything that looked remotely like that it's very aesthetically weird movie just did not like it at all wanted to i love uh, the the first three evil dead movies mm. i was kind of hoping for a nice return to form and i i just don't know what the fuck this was uh, just not not for me i mean i'm, I'm not saying i want to see this but they should make they should have damian rugna make an, an evil dead film you know what i mean yeah yeah that's that's the guy who should make a movie like that not whoever made evil dead rise well, I'm sure, like I always say, Hollywood is going to tap him to do something. I also wanted to point out my favorite uh, horror movie of last year is being remade by Bloomhouse, Speak No Evil. I heard about that, oh, yeah. Well, no, we, after we covered or talked at length about it, because the three of us, I think, have talked about Speak No Evil, it was announced almost immediately that the remake was coming. I remember saying something about the remake. Yeah. So it was almost an immediate announce. Now, I don't wow. know how the fuck they're going to Americanize and sanitize this movie. Maybe they're not going to Americanize and sanitize this movie, but I have a feeling they are. They should just leave that movie alone. But we'll Yeah. See. Bloomhouse doesn't make downers like that. It kind of, you know what I thought of when uh, I thought of uh, The Vanishing, how bleak and, and disturbing the uh, European version is. And how, uh, like, how the American uh, ending was like a happy ending. They completely switch the ending and I, I see something similar to this happening but uh you know that movie kind of hinges like i mean it's a great movie but that ending is a a punch to to the stomach man it is really upsetting and uh you take that out of the movie i think it loses some of its power so hey i i really hope they stick uh they, they stick to the original source material mm. with that uh I, i'm not against remakes at all i think there's been some very good uh, remakes out there, but this is this is perplexing uh, to me. Like I, I don't see an American audience is going for something that bleak. Yeah, I mean, and also so much of the film hinges on being European too. Like the whole like yeah. uh, you know Scandinavian um, sort of uh, you know politeness and manners, mm -hmm. and all that. And the the other guy was Dutch, right? So, I think so. Yeah, so you know, and the Dutch are more libertine sort of types, you know, and right. That, I felt like that really was kind of like the conflict of the whole film was like the conflict between those two sort of Euro European like lifestyles. You know what I mean? Right. So to make this in the United States. Like how the hell are they going to do that? Really? You know what I mean? I Maybe the other family will be like Canadian or something. 
<laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe that's a Canadian. I think the, the swap out could be a class thing. It could mm. be a poor rich swap out. We've seen so much of that class issues in movies lately. I'm a little annoyed yeah. by by people who spend millions and millions of dollars to tell you how, 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 uh, about you know capitalism is terrible and things like that. I'm mean, like, it's true. hey, I think I mean I, I agree with the sentiment, but uh, you know, I just we've seen it so much lately in 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 movies. Maybe it'll be a nine non-binary couple or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, maybe, like, maybe it'll thing. be like yeah, or or they could do it as a uh, red state blue state switch. There's a bunch of switches they could do here, right? And but again, yeah, it's ran into the ground too, in my opinion. But I, I yeah, I agree. All a lot of these the social commentary. If you're gonna do it, do it really, really well because I feel like it's being beaten into the ground and not in a necessarily clever way i know there's a mo- new movie coming out called uh civil war from a director i really like um yeah. whose name i fudged again i can't alex gardner i think it is something like that he made ex machina he made men uh i saw the trailer and i was like man i don't know like yeah. i really i hope this is smarter than it seems it's like or, or they can do it the way that soft and quiet <laughs> the way that soft and quiet did it mm. Which, soft and quiet yeah you ever, have, you, have, you ever have you guys seen that one no i haven't seen that oh no I oh did see man that. i saw that yeah oh I man I it. It, yeah i saw uh, it. Yeah. yeah watch it and then get back to us <laughs> all right let me write that down soft and quiet yeah it's on netflix yeah oh is it oh perfect yeah, yeah. I believe I so yeah i mean hopefully anything else you guys are looking forward to next year like i said I'm very curious about the civil war movie curious about the this remake is there anything else coming out that you can think of that's like you can't wait for i don't even know what's coming out next year honestly <laughs> um, one, trying to get through the rest of this year man the last yeah. few weeks of 2023 you know one a mission for for all of us that is apparently a wonderful film and according to my brother jumped into his top five or six is the new godzilla yeah. Mm, okay. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. To be checking it out. Yeah. Like really, like harsh, and like what you really want in a Godzilla movie, uh, finally realized is apparently this new one. Um. So it, it's a movie I definitely want to see. I love you know any kind of monster movie, and then you know King Kong, Godzilla, that whole thing, all about it. Oh, for next That's... year, there's one movie I'm looking forward to. Is the new the new Planet of the Apes. I'm looking forward to that. It's oh, okay. Planet of the Apes next year. So. Um, and there's a new uh, uh, um, Penguin series coming out from the uh, yes. Matt Reeves Batman universe. Mike, Mike Hill and I, we covered the Batman. Uh, absolutely love that. Very curious about the expansion of that world. And uh, loves Colin Farrell as the Penguin. Can't wait to see more of him. Yeah. Well, right. happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. Uh, yes. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, whatever. Um Happy New Year, like all that sort of stuff. Happy, yep. uh, you know, enjoy yourselves. And this is uh, this is going to be it for us for a week or so. And we'll see you in January of 2024. That's right. Cheers. Thank you all. Take care, everyone.
Yeah. I, I have terrible news for you, Michael. Yeah. The movie came out in September of 2022. What? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, a red flag has been thrown. <laughs>